Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be running through uh, a getting started into DCS World video, pretty much. All right, so uh, the release of Top Leon Maverick has seen a lot of uh, people discover DCS World, which is awesome. Um, and there's a scene, spoiler alert, there's a, a scene in uh, Top Gun Maverick where uh, Rooster gets in the, the back of the, the Tomcat in the Rio seat and gets asked to do something. And he just looks blankly at all the buttons and circuit breakers and is just totally blown away and he doesn't know where to start. And that scene is pretty much summed up my DCS experience when I first started. Um, and I'm sure it has summed up a lot of other people's DCS experience as well. You get in there, you're like all keen, and then you realize how far you have jumped into the hole that you have no idea how to get out of. So we're going to run through all the things that I think uh, should be covered before you decide uh, on buying a module, getting uh, your computer upgraded, all that kind of stuff. We're going to run through all that stuff in this video and hopefully give you guys who have never actually got into DCS and you're wanting to do it, um, give you guys a bit of an idea of what you're looking at getting yourself into and yeah, kind of give you some uh, some pointers on where to look and all the rest of it. All right, so we're going to kick things off. So this is the, uh, the digitalcombatsimulator.com. So this is where you will get the game. All right. Uh, you just come over onto the, just make a profile, come over to the downloads and just click on DCS World. Click on that. And this is going to bring up your, this is where you download the game. So the, the game itself is free, okay, to download. It doesn't cost you anything, but you uh, only get the SU-25, which is the Russian um, attack aircraft, and the P-51 training aircraft, which is the World War II P-51. Uh, that's, uh, you see Maverick flying in Top Gun 2. Okay, the World War II, the Warbird, you get that, but it doesn't have guns or anything like that. It's just a trainer. So you get those two for free plus the Caucus map, all right? And then from there, if you want to fly other aircraft or fly on other maps, you need to buy them off the website, okay? So that's how they kind of stick the barbs in, they get you. Anyways, <clears throat> to download, you've got two options here. So you've got DCS World 2.7 uh, dedicated server, and then DCS World 2.7 open beta, and then Deep DCS World 2.7 open beta dedicated server. So if you're brand new and you're getting into DCS, don't even worry about this, okay? Don't worry about a dedicated server, okay? That's nothing that you need to concern yourself with. You're going to be deciding on whether to download DCS World 2.7 and DCS World 2.7 open beta. What is the difference between the two? DCS World is 2.7. This is the stable uh, version of DCS. So most of the bugs have been worked out. I'm not saying that it's totally bug free, but most of them have been uh, wo have been worked out. Minimal bugs, um, which is good. Okay, so you don't have uh, game breaking issues that you get with the open beta. Um, <clears throat> and there's generally a fair few versions behind the open beta. So, uh, the open beta. So if you um, seeing on YouTube, you're seeing like the Falklands map, for example, has just came out. That will not be in the release version. Okay, you won't have access to the, the Falklands map, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but uh, you definitely won't have access to a brand new aircraft like the uh, Apache when it first dropped. It was not available on DCS World Stable. It was only available on the open beta because it's an early access module. So that's number one. Do you want to have access to all the brand new stuff that comes out, maps, um, maps, modules, campaigns, all that kind of stuff. Um, do you want that? And the next question is, if you want that, if you want all the stuff that comes out straight away, you need to be prepared to uh, deal with issues with the open beta. Okay, so they release a, a patch every couple of weeks, sometimes once a month and trying to fix problems that uh, pop up from the previous open beta patch that they've done. So the easy way to think of it is they fix one thing, they break three other things, all right? And that's just the nature of the beast. They, they are working on the coding, they fix some issue, and then that, that change in code affects something else that they didn't foresee, and then that breaks something else. And it's just constantly chasing that tail, fixing the coding up, and all the rest of it, and other issues that get reported to DCS World yeah, dev team, and they try and fix it. And then once they've worked all those bugs out, then they push it to the DCS World stable branch, which is the, uh, the more stable. Okay, it's got less bugs because they all, all the bugs happen in open beta. So that's number one. If you want all the good stuff, you have to accept the fact that 
it is going to break your baby your your favorite aircraft it will break at times there'll be it'll become unflyable probably at some point where you won't be able to shoot guns you won't be able to shoot missiles properly the missiles won't track or the radar doesn't work anymore or the flight models are broken it's going to happen okay you have to accept that and if you don't want to deal with that stuff don't go open beta okay go for your uh, dcs world 2.7 release all right you just won't have access to all the the cool stuff that everyone's flying on but you also don't have to deal with a lot of the crap that they have to deal with as well the other thing that could sway your mind for uh, choosing between the two is if you are planning on flying DCS World as uh, primarily a single player player, so you're not going to be flying with other people, you're just going to do it in your own time in single player missions, you're not going to fly um, against other people in PvP or PvE where you all work together and fight the enemy. If you're just interested in single player, I would just go with uh, DCS World 2.7, all right, because... Um, you're not you're not going to be flying multiplayer and the reason i say that is because the pro, the predominantly the most of the popular multiplayer servers are only on the dcs world 2.7 open beta okay they're only there um so if you've got the stable branch you won't be able to see uh, you know like the the growling sidewinders the the, uh, the blue flag uh what other ones is there you got the uh, low level hell guys with the, the apache stuff um ray flag is another server that's just popping up it's getting pretty popular you've got the enigma cold war server there's heaps of servers that are, are pretty popular there's also world war ii servers can't remember the name of them off the top of my head but there is world war ii warbird servers um and they're all on open beta so i'm not saying there's no servers on release but majority of them are on open beta so if you want to play multiplayer playing with your friends and playing um you know flying with your friends or flying against other people which is more of a challenge um open beat is the way you want to go all right so that's the difference there so hopefully that made sense next one is the money pit of dcs world so it is pretty um how would you say pretty in intensive on the computer okay so you you don't or well, you're not going to get a very good experience if you've got a potato of a computer so you need a you know a mid-range to top-end computer to run this game and have it look good okay like you see in all the youtube videos and stuff like that um <clears throat> so you need to take into account if your computer is really old you're probably going to be looking at having to upgrade some things or maybe just scrap that one and uh get a new one if it's that old um, but the main things that i would uh, definitely recommend that you upgrade if you haven't already is uh your ssd okay if you're running on a normal hard drive which most people hopefully are upgraded to an SSD these days, a solid state hard drive. If you're not operating on a normal hard drive, like I was when I first started uh, DCS, this game will take you like, I'm talking like 10 minutes to load the map. Okay, 10 minutes. You're going to be sitting there on the loading screen for 10 minutes. Whereas you go to a SSD or even better, an M.2, okay, the latest and greatest uh, solid state drives, it's literally seconds. Okay, so the difference between them, SSD minimum, um you need and i would go for at least a terabyte for dcs world just have a if you can afford it which they're not too badly priced for just a normal ssd if you can afford a terabyte um ssd i would get it installed in your computer and just put dcs only on that because this is a big ass game so you've got all the maps if you buy them you've got all the modules you know you're looking at a lot of uh a lot of let me see here see what my uh let's have a look do it on my other screen properties all right so this is the size of my uh eagle dynamics folder there we go 429 gig is how much space dcs world with all the modules that i've got all the maps that i've got that's how big a game this thing is so a terabyte is not you know is definitely not going to be a waste all right and uh i've got most of the maps which do take up a fair bit and i've got most of the modules so obviously the more modules and the more maps you've got the bigger the game's going to be um but if you went full ham just bought everything in the game you're like, i don't care i'm just going to get it all you're looking you, you're going to need a lot of space okay you're going to need heaps of space so ssd at least a terabyte and have it just as a dedicated uh if you can justify it just have it as a dedicated dcs drive 
don't have anything else on it except DCS, and then you shouldn't run into dramas for for uh, space. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is your RAM. So DCS seems to be a uh, a very very RAM intensive game. All right, and uh, I was running on a 16 gig of RAM for a long time, and it runs on 16 gig of RAM. Okay, if you had 8 gig of RAM, you're probably going to really struggle on um, on some maps, and depending on how many units and stuff are in the actual mission. But um, 16 is playable, but 32 minimum I would go with. Okay, so if you don't have 32 gig of RAM, that is going to be a big bang for buck upgrade for your computer to make DCS World run better and you won't have a, a slideshow on your hands of uh, dropping frames like a mofo all the time because the RAM does get used. So I've got 32 gig of RAM at the moment and probably my next upgrade I do on my computer will be upgrading to 64 gig um, just because it just chews the RAM up. Okay, it's the only game that I've got that eats it as much as uh, it does but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, 32 gig of RAM minimum would be my recommendation, but you can get away with 16 gig. Okay, we'll run. <clears throat> uh, minimum for your graphics card is, I would go with a 1080, maybe a 1070. All right, but a 1070, 1080, a 10 series uh, NVIDIA card minimum to run it on decent graphics levels. I uh, used to run a 1070, and it ran 1070 with 16 gig of RAM on an i7 processor, and it ran fine. Um, it was just a little bit... Uh, frame frame droppy on the big maps but now I, i've uh, upgraded to a 2080 ti that's the graphics card i use right now and if you go a 30 series obviously that's gonna you know a 30 uh 3070 or a 30 what 3080 3070 or 3080 you know the big boy the big boys if you get one of them you have no dramas on the graphics <clears throat> um and then for your cpu um you know you can get away with a a standard ish uh, processor because the bottleneck in DCS will come from RAM more than your uh, CPU unless you've got like an absolutely old as hell one but if you've got an i5 or an i7 uh, CPU you'll have no dramas it should run pretty fine on there and that's just because DCS the way it's uh, the game works it doesn't use the CPU as much as it probably should um, yeah it's a whole lot of stuff behind the scenes stuff that my uh, my little computer literate brain doesn't understand but all i know is that it gets bottlenecked from ram more than anything else in the game so ram is going to be a better upgrade for you than uh, getting a, a top of the range um uh cpu so i've got a i god i can't even remember what i've got mm. i don't even know how to get my system specs up anyways i had an i7 and i've gone to an i9 uh cpu and i still get issues with the i9 because of the ram all right so yeah don't stress on the cpu too much uh the next thing we want to talk about is head tracking okay head tracking and peripheral so hotasses so here we go here's the first page so the the main stable that most players use in dcs uh is called track ir5 all right, and it is on the uh, just if you just Google Track IR, you come onto this web page and you can buy it off of the web page. There you go. So it's um, Track Clip Pro is what I would go for. So it's one hundred sixty nine ninety five Australian dollars. Um, you can buy a replacement clip because they are pretty flimsy. Like mine is held together with blue tack at the moment, but it still does the job. Um, yeah, so you can buy it brand new or you can run the risk and buy it off eBay or, you know, Gumtree or Craigslist or wherever you buy your secondhand stuff. But obviously if you buy a secondhand, you run the risk of it being, you know, not uh, in good nick and you can't send it back for being broken out of the box. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So track IR, if you don't know what it is, it clips onto your helmet, uh, onto your headset. You can kind of see it there on that guy. Um, let's actually... Give us a picture of it to learn more. There you go. You kind of see it. So it clips onto your headset and then you put this little guy, this clips onto the, or just sits on the top of your monitor. And then the LED lights on the, uh, the headset, the clip right there, get picked up by this. And then you can move your head around. So if I bring up my track IR, you son of a bitch, it's already running. Right. So you can see there, that's my track IR profile. 
I'll move my head around and it just tracks it. Okay, and the reason why that is good is because uh, in DCS, if you've got track IR, when you move your head left and right in real time, it moves your pilot's head in the aircraft real time. So it's like you're actually sitting in the plane. So track IR is the mainstay. Most people use it, but there is plenty of other options. Uh, there's like track hat, um, just Google um, track, IR, track IR alternatives, and there'll be a shitload of them you can find. Um, and, you know, as much as you want to spend. So I use track IR. Five, this is one I've got, and I've had mine for, God, I don't even know how long, years, like five years, and I bought it off of Gumtree, which is like the Australian version of Craigslist. I, I bought it for five bucks, uh, sorry, $50, 50 bucks, um, got it out of the box. It was a little bit broken a bit, but it works fine, um, and it's been going solid ever since, so I, I did get a bargain on mine. So it's not in perfect condition, but again, that's a risky take. Uh, and then you've got VR as well. So the DCS does support VR. Um, if you're using or if you want to go into VR, uh, there's most people use the uh, the Rift S, Oculus Rift S, or the uh, God HP uh, Reverb G6 or something. I don't know what it is. But I don't do VR, but there's plenty. If you just Google on YouTube, Google it. Uh, best VR headset for DCS. There'll be plenty of. Uh, forum threads and videos you can watch on what's the best for that but i haven't really dived into the uh the virtual reality but it does support it i have flown in virtual reality it is amazing it's just um for making videos content creation all the rest doesn't look as good when you record it so um if it looked as good as track ir did um in vr as it does in on youtube i would fucking 100 percent be using uh vr all the time but because it doesn't look as good for YouTube. I don't want to get VR because pretty much if you had a VR headset sitting there, VR and track IR at the same time, I, you'd be hard pressed to fly track IR. Like, and it'd just be like going backwards so much just for the immersion and stuff. Like just to fly track IR when you're doing a uh, YouTube video, just, it'd just kill me knowing that VR is sitting there. So I just don't tempt myself. Anyways. <clears throat> that's enough on that so you need head tracking or virtual reality i would recommend it don't use the mouse to look around okay that is i mean you can do it but it's going to make it hard so i would definitely invest in uh, some head tracking software and uh, hardware get that and then the next thing you want is a hotas okay so hotas stands for hands on throttle and stick okay so there's heaps of different versions so the Probably the biggest entry level HOTAS that people get would be, let me. This bad boy. All right, this is what I started on. On this, when it loads up. All right, the Extreme 3D Pro. That guy. All right. It's got a little throttle on the side there and it's got a few buttons on it. All right, that's, you can fly with this. Okay, you can do stuff. You're going to be severely handicapped um, in terms of you're going to have to use the keyboard a lot more for uh, binds and all the rest of it, but you can definitely fly with this. And um, if you know the DCS World community, so uh, 104 Maverick, shout out. He used to fly... He's upgraded recently to a, I don't remember what he upgraded to, but a proper HOTAS, but he used to fly with this as his joystick. He had a, a separate throttle, but he used to use a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joystick to fly. And if you've ever seen Maverick fly, he ain't no slouch. He knows what he's doing. So, you know, you can definitely do some good stuff with this joystick. It's just starting out. Um, you're just going to be having to bind a lot more stuff. Um, but this one, this Rustmaster T1600M, or 16,000 M, slowed him up. This is the, uh, I've never used this, right? Because I started off on the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Um, you bastard, get out of it. There we go. All right, so this is it here. It's, uh, has it got a price? 100, 150 bucks. And that's on, I think this is on the American store. But you get a joystick and you get a throttle. So you get both of these things, all right? Which is going to make your life a whole lot easier so 
um, Thrustmaster T16000M. A lot of people start off on this, and I've heard nothing but good stuff about it um, for an entry level HOTAS. So that's 150 bucks there. The next thing that I would look at once you've bought yourself an entry level HOTAS would be getting yourself a set of rudder pedals. All right, because uh, depending on what you're going to fly, if you're going to fly um, helicopters in DCS, rudder pedals are, I would say, a, a necessity. You need rudder pedals to fly the helicopters uh, decently in DCS world. Um, and this is what I used to use, the TFRP. This is what I got, and you can pick them up for, again, you know, anywhere from $150 to $200, depending on the pricing. Um, good entry-level rudder pedal. Are they as good as the ones I'm running right now? Definitely not. But to start off, like they served me for a good three years. Okay, so I got three years out of them. The only reason I upgraded was because I just was like, well, why not? All right. I had a bit of extra money sitting around. So I uh, upgraded my my rudder pedals to the, uh, let's see if I can, TPR. I think that's what they're called. TPR rudder pedals, these guys here. These ones. All right, that's the ones I use at the moment. And they're brilliant. I love them. Um, but there's heaps and heaps of different uh, companies you can use. So this is Thrustmaster. Uh, make these ones. Thrustmaster make the uh, these rudder pedals. Oh, sorry. These ones. They're both Thrustmaster as well, but you there's also Verpal, um, another another company. Anyways, so that would be a good entry level. Get yourself T sixteen hundred M, sixteen thousand M, and a set of rudder pedals. Um, the next step up, so this is what I went to next, which was the X fifty six Rhino Hotas, okay, which is Logitech now. It was uh, SciTech when I bought it. I bought this off of someone online. You've also got the X fifty two Hotas you can get. I bought mine off of someone off of eBay. It was brand new, in a box, supposedly. I bought it. It lasted about, I'm going to say a month. One month and then the joystick stopped working. All right. So, again, buyer beware. If you buy off a, uh, a second-hand selling place, you run the risk of getting stitched up by, um, yeah, something might be wrong with it and they just bodged it up intermittently so it'll work for a little bit and then when it breaks they're like don't care i got my money out of you um so you're better off buying your hotas and stuff something that you're spending big money i would say you're better off buying through an actual computer store um or online through the actual company so that if it does break for some unknown reason um you can email them say hey you know i've only had this for three months this is broken what the hell and then you can hopefully get a yeah, refund or get a replacement part sent out to you. Whereas if you just buy it off eBay, you can't do shit. All right, so I got stitched up. The joystick stopped working on me. Um, so, yeah, then I upgraded to the uh, – this is what I currently run right now, the Thrustmaster Warthog. Okay, so this is, again, that's 430 pound. All right, so it's expensive to get into this. Um, but slowly, slowly just work your way up if you enjoy DCS World. So that's what I'm running, and I've got the uh, F-18 grip, not the uh, that's the Warthog slash F-16 grip. I've got the F-18 stick edition as well. And then other versions that you can get. There's also the Verpal and Win Wing. So this is Win Wing. Uh, they do a heap of um, heap of hotasses. You can just go in there, uh, Win Wing, and then you've got Verpal as well, which is also really good quality gear. I've never heard anyone complain about Verpal. It's like solid, solid bit of kit. They do um, joysticks and they also do rudder pedals as well. Okay, and the rudder pedals from what I've heard are amazing as well, the Verpal rudder pedals. So if you want to spend bulk money and you don't really give a shit about the cost of things, um, yeah, do some research, but they're the, the, main, the main groups. Thrustmaster, Win Wing, and Verpal. They're the, probably the big three big named um, Hotas manufacturers in the DCS community at the moment <clears throat> that everyone's kind of using a combo of those three. Um, and yeah, you can interchange. So say you bought this, this uh, Hotas here and you had these pedals, all right, and you upgraded these pedals to 
these pedals, all right, you can use these pedals with this, okay? You can use all this stuff as interchangeable. So you can buy a Thrustmaster Warthog joystick, all right? You can buy that and you can run it with the throttle here, okay? Or you can do like what Maverick was doing. He was using this joystick and he was uh, flying with the X52 Potas throttle, okay? That's what he used to use. So you can pair them up so you don't have to upgrade everything all at once. If you see a good deal and someone's selling a joystick or a throttle or a rudder pedals, you can buy them and then just slowly, slowly chip away at upgrading your stuff. So don't think you're, uh, you're going to have to shell out big cash straight away. You can slowly chip away, which is what most people do. Anyways, that is Hotasses. I would recommend getting a Hotas, though. It's going to make your life a whole lot better, and you're going to enjoy DCS a lot more. So head tracking or VR and a Hotas and rudder pedals. Okay. Next one is modules. Okay, modules. So you go again, we're going to go back to the DCS website, go to the eShop, and you're going to click on modules, and this is going to show you all the modules that you can purchase. All right, so. Uh, let's go. So you've got, yeah, pretty much everything. So the uh, the latest one that's come out is the uh, the Apache, the AH64 uh, Apache, super brilliant module. But you can see prices. Okay, they're not cheap. This is in, in uh, US dollars. Um, so that's the kicker with DCS. Would you get the map for free? The Caucasus map, Caucasus map. And you get the SU-25 and the P-51 trainer for free. And then anything else that you want to fly, you have to pay for. All right? And you can see they're, they're not cheap. Okay, they add up, especially if you want to get a lot of them. All right? So when you are deciding on what module you should get, okay, you're like, all right, I like DCS. I don't want to fly the SU-25 and I don't, I don't want to fly the P-51 trainer. I actually want to do some things. I want to fly a jet or a helicopter. What should you go for? So my advice, and I get a, got asked this a lot on um, when I used to stream a shitload, that was probably the, one of the biggest questions I got asked all the time from people that would come into the channel is how much or what module should I get? What should I get? And that is a, that is a open-ended question, big can of worms. But what it all boils down to is go with what you love. And what I mean by that is if you have a, if you've got an aircraft that you've just had a thing for, um, since a kid, all right? And a lot of people, it's the, uh, the F-14, the Tomcat, all right? They saw Top Gun way back in the day and they've just got this soft spot in their heart for the, uh, the, the Tomcat. And they just, there's something about it, they just love it. They love the look of it. They just love the Tomcat. If you're in that boat, get the Tomcat because it's something that you will enjoy learning how to fly, all right? If you, you know, you, you've got a thing for the Viper or the Apache, whatever it is, if you want a, if there's an aircraft that you've had a thing for and you enjoy it, like get it, get that because it's going to make your um, learning in DCS because you're going to be doing a lot of it. Um, it's going to make it more enjoyable and more worth it because you're actually learning how to fly and operate a module that is something that you want to fly. Rather than just like, oh, they said it was good, but I suck at it. So it's shit. I don't like it. Okay. Because a lot of people do fall into that trap as well. <clears throat> but if you had to pick one module, one module only, you could only have one module that would give you the biggest and bestest bang for buck in DCS world. And you could only get one. I would go with the F-18 Hornet. Where are you? Where are you? Where's the Hornet? Tomcat, there we go. All right, I would go with this, F-18 Hornet. And if you watch my channel, you know that it's, it's the, uh, the aircraft that I fly pretty much exclusively. Um, absolutely love it. And the only reason why I say go with the Hornet is because it gives you, um, it gives you pretty much everything that DCS World can offer. So you can do in-flight aero refueling. You can land on an aircraft carrier. You can do air-to-air -air combat. You can do dogfights. You can do bombing, ground attack. You can do seed, so you're taking out SAM sites. Um, you can do anti-shipping. There's everything in DCS World the Hornet can do, all right, besides hover like a helicopter or the Harrier. But for a fixed-wing aircraft, 
that's going to give you the biggest bang for buck. Okay, so if you're like, oh, I don't know which one to fly, that would be my recommendation, would be get the Hornet because you you literally can do everything in the game with the one module. All right, whereas the, uh, the A-10, for example, the A-10 Warthog, super good at ground attack, but it is absolutely rubbish in, you know, fighting other aircraft. Like it can defend itself, but against an F-18 Hornet, F-18 Hornet versus a, uh, an A-10, the A-10 is going to lose pretty much every single time against someone that knows what they're doing at the Hornet. Like there's no factor. Like the, the Hornet will absolutely smoke the, the A-10 because it's just got, it's built for shooting down aircraft, whereas the A-10 is built for taking out ground targets, tanks, and all that kind of stuff. So the Hornet's more of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, whereas you've got your specialist aircrafts like the, uh, the A-10 and, uh, yeah, all those kind of ones. All right, your F-15, which is a, just a primary, it's just a, an air-to-air aircraft. Air superiority fighter, it doesn't do any ground attack at all. So, yeah. There you go. Um, awesome. So there's all your modules. You can scroll down. You can search through them all. It's all on the DCS Combat Simulator website. Um, just go to the eShop, click modules. You can also go to Rains, and you can see all the maps there. So the South Atlantic just came out um, a couple of, I think, a week ago now. And there you go. You can see their free disk space for this map, 66 gig to download the map. That's how big the map is, 66 gigabyte. Syria, 63 gig. Channel map 22. So the maps are big. They have big maps. Um, but they're they're huge as well. Okay, the maps are huge. Um yeah, lost my uh, train of thought there. But yeah, or the eShops. Okay, eShop, this is where you find everything you can buy. Okay. Uh next one, the learning curve. Learning curve in DCS is massive. Okay, it is absolutely massive. And the reason I say that is because it is a uh, study level sim. So every button in the cockpit does something on the full fidelity modules. Um, every every switch has a function, is pretty much um, mapped and clickable and does something in the aircraft. And they've made it as close to the real thing as they possibly can with the, uh, the data that they've got access to. Um, so it is not just like Ace Combat where you just jump in, you spawn into the plane and you're already in full afterburn with unlimited missiles and you can just fly around and just pull fucking G's for at full speed and, you know, do crazy barrel roll fucking shit and 360 no scope fucking aim, aim 120 shots. You can't do that stuff in DCS world. Okay, it does not work. You can crash into ground a lot if you try and do that, but it won't. it's not like War Thunder or Ace Combat. It is, it is full on. Okay, so you need to be prepared to suck, all right, because you're going to suck when you first start. You're going to get your, your ass kicked, especially if you go and try and do um, anything besides learn how to fly straight off the bat. So if you're like, I don't care, I don't want to learn how to fly, I just want to take off and I want to shoot someone down. So you go load up a, a mission and you, somehow you manage to take off in the air and then you get in the air and then you will just get smoked because you have no idea how to use the radar. You don't know how to use the weapons. You don't know how to set the weapons. You don't know anything. All right, and that's a, what a lot of people do. They try and uh, learn how to sprint before they've learned how to crawl. Okay, so the learning curve is big. Uh, so be prepared for it to suck, which is why if you've chosen a module that you have a thing for, it's going to make learning that module a lot more enjoyable for you and not so, you know, uh, just a pain in the ass trying to learn stuff so you can go do something because you don't really enjoy the plane you're flying. Uh, use resources to your advantage. So there is so much information on the internet. Okay, so you've got uh, YouTube. Obviously, you're watching this YouTube video right now. So my channel, um, I primarily focus on the F-18, but I do plan in the future to do the other modules as well. But at the moment, F-18 is the one that I'm doing a lot of tutorials for. So uh, there's so many content creators. Just type in the name of the plane, type in DCS tutorial, and then press enter and you'll see you know, literally thousands of videos that you can watch. And the beauty about it is if you enjoy the way that someone teaches, the way they explain things, then they're your person, okay? Because it makes sense to you. Whereas other people, there's other content creators that... Um, you know, they're, they're totally different to me. We're all different. That's why it's good. 
Um, you know, but some of the content creators, like I watch their videos because I want to learn how to do stuff, but the stuff they're talking is like proper pilot speak and it just goes over my head for a lot of it. I'm just like, what? I don't understand what the hell you just even said, right? Because they, but they don't care. They want it to be, you know, like a, they're talking to an actual pilot, right? But for most of us, especially if you're just getting into DCS world, you're not a pilot. You don't know how pilots speak. You don't know all that stuff. So watch all the videos. And if it makes sense to you, keep watching it and learn from them. And then, yeah, just go from there. And then eventually you'll probably be able to watch the more advanced videos and it'll, and it'll make sense as well. Um, <clears throat> also, there is Discord. So a lot of, a lot of uh, YouTubers and Twitch, Twitch, uh, Twitch streamers have got discords or they're part of discords there's uh on the multiplayer servers most of the multiplayer servers have got a discord you can go in there and you can ask questions on how stuff works say you're new to the game um, and you need some help and for the most part the community is really really helpful and they'll you know point you in the right direction and give you lots and lots of advice um also there is uh chuck's guide so let's quickly google that see so if you just google Chuck's Guide DCS. Here we go on the mudspike.com page. So, this here is absolute gold mine of stuff. So, you've got jets, World War II helicopters, general. So, if you click on jets, here's all the, uh, the guides he's got. So, you've got, and this is in depth, right? In depth, like how to start, how to bind your controls, how to start the aircraft up, how to taxi, how to take off how to use all the systems, everything, okay? This is going to be like a, a flight manual for you, but not uh, written in pure pilot speak that, so you can actually understand it. So I get a lot of my stuff, a lot of my information when I first uh, start flying a module. I come to Chuck's Guides and have a read if I'm struggling on how to do stuff. Um, Chuck's Guides is definitely um, a good resource for you to read and just have a, have a general gander. So check that as well, Chuck's Guide. Um, and then the last one for resources, you can come over to the forums page. So once you've made an account, go to the forums and then you've got here the squadrons. Okay. And there is a lot of virtual squadrons. Okay. That play DCS world and you can search through and find yourself a squadron that sounds good. And so there you go. There's one with the discord link. They've got, you know, you can join all these virtual squadrons and they've got um, all the way from you've never flown in DCS world ever. You've never flown at all. Never done a flight sim. Let's just type this. This is the other uh, squadron I started out with when I first joined. 161 squadron. Where are you? You gonna lie to me now? Anyways, they'll be in here somewhere. 161 squadron. They're an Australian squadron. Um, Really, really good, really, really good bunch of guys. Yeah, the only reason that I uh, don't fly with them anymore is just because of work. Like I can't make the times that they fly, um, and do their sorties and stuff. So it just didn't work. I never, I never got to fly with them. So there, it was no point um, staying there because I just flew at a different time to them most of the time. But they are super helpful, and I'm sure all of these other ones are. I right, find, especially if you just say, "Hey, look, I'm, uh, I'm new. Just jump on the forums." Uh, jump on Discord, ask questions in YouTube channels, say, hey, I'm brand new, I don't know anything, I fly, blah, whatever aircraft it is, I want to learn how to fly, you know, I'm, I'm interested in either just being casual or I want to learn, like, I want to dive deep and just learn how to be an actual fighter pilot without being a fighter pilot, there's a, a squadron for you. Okay, they've got it, you covered. <clears throat> so that's um, a resource there and you can just Again, just uh, Google search DCS virtual squadrons and it'll come up with more forums than just the, uh, the official DCS world forums. There'll be plenty of like Reddit channels and stuff like that. Sweet. So that's that done. And then the last one is things I wish I knew when I started. So <clears throat> first and foremost, modules. Right. There is always a sale. Okay, there's always a sale. So if you come in here and you're looking at the module and you're like, you can see there's already a sale or a discount going on right now. Okay, so full price, $80 for the Apache. Right now it's $64. 
Um, the A10 II doesn't have a sale at the moment. P47, not on sale. So if you've got an aircraft that you want to get and you don't want to spend X amount of dollars on it, just wait. So the DCS run a sale pretty often. Let's see if they got actually any... Uh... Here we go, 13th of May. 50% flash sale. Let's click on that. There you go. So on the 13th of May, uh, pre pleased to bring you our spring 2022 flash sale that will run until the 22nd of May at 1500 Greenwich Mean Time. So they have sales, all right? And then and there you go, the A10, 30% uh, on the A10. So at the moment, remember, uh, the A10 was full price at the moment, but in the sale, it was 30% off. Okay, so they do sales um, regularly. So if you don't want to pay full price, hold off a couple of months, all right, unless you need to buy the module because you have to have it, then, you know, you're just going to have to pay full price, but they have sales a lot, okay? So you can just wait for a sale and then buy your aircraft then at a bit of a discount. So it's not such a big hit to the pocket. Um, the other one is, where are you? Uh, at least, can I sort by... Sure. Where are you? This one caught me out. Let's quickly get to it. Come on, come on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Open link in new tab. All right. So I first got DCS World. And I thought the SU-25 was a fighter jet because I had no idea about anything in DCS world. I was totally brand new to it. Um, then I did a bit of research and then I realized that the F SU-25 is actually a ground attack aircraft. It's Russian and I wanted to shoot stuff. That's what I wanted to do. So I um, saw the F-15 Eagle for DCS world. All right. And I bought this. For 14 bucks i didn't read anything i just saw eagle yep f15 eagle bam buying it bought it okay you can see they bought you have already serial number for this product this little note right here it may or may not have been there when i bought the f15 but regardless i didn't read anything i just bought it because i wanted to get the uh the module so here you go note the aircraft module is identical to the flaming cliffs 3 module owners of fc3 do not need to purchase so I paid, I'm pretty sure I paid 15 bucks for it, $15, right, for that. And it's $15 for the A10A, for $15 for the SU-25 Tango. Uh, and then it is also $15 for the SU-27, another $15 for the SU-33, right? So that's a lot of $15 right there. And you come up to here. And oh, boom, DCS Flaming Cliffs 3. So this costs $50 and you get the F15, which is 15 bucks, A10, $15, SU27, $15, SU33, $15, MiG29, $15, SU25, $15. You get all of them for 50 bucks. All right, which then when I realized that, I also bought Flaming Cliffs 3 and wasted $15 because I didn't read the instructions properly. So the difference, Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft, um, these are not full fidelity, so you can't click on the cockpits. Okay, they still work, you can still do stuff with them, but you can't um, use your mouse to click on like the engine start switch or, you know, you can't click on a radar knob and adjust it. Okay, it's all um, keybind, so it's a lower fidelity module. All right, so it's not as in-depth as the... Uh, the F-18, for example, okay, the F-15 is not as in-depth to learn as the F-18 is. Um, yeah, so there you go. FC-3 aircraft provide an easy learning curve for new players and focuses on a broad range of aircraft rather than a detailed single aircraft. So, again, if you're unsure on the fence on this, the uh, Flaming Cliffs could be something that you want to buy as your first one because you get 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven aircraft for 50 bucks, which is pretty good. And this also goes on sale. Air Flaming Cliffs 3 also goes on sale. Uh, so you get seven aircraft for the one price, and then you can see if you like DCS World or not without buying, you know, spending massive bank on like 90 bucks for a module and then realizing you don't like it. So yeah, so there's that. That's number one. Okay, there's always a sale. And don't get caught out. Read the instructions, read the description to make sure that's not part of another pack that you could get for the same price or cheaper. Um, yeah, I already touched on make sure you fly what you want to fly, not what others recommend. Okay, because if you speak to people, they're going to obviously influence your choice by, you know, their own um, their own reasons and their own uh, yeah issues they've had with other aircraft in the past or they might think that it's easier um so go with what you want to fly so if you've got a you know a, a, an aircraft you've loved since you've been a kid go with that okay go with that because that way you're going to enjoy flying it no matter what uh dcs is not cheap i think uh, we've covered that pretty much so you know the modules the maps uh track ir hotasses rudder pedals um you know and then you've got uh where is it wing wing you've got <laughs> desk mounts like this it's never ending it just keeps going and uh yeah you can you know you know computer upgrades ram graphics cards all that stuff it all because of a game it all adds up it is a money pit so um if you are not in a good position financially um DCS isn't going to help that position because <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a money pit. Like it's, everyone that plays it knows what I'm talking about. You know, you all know. It ain't, uh, it ain't cheap. It adds up real quick. I don't even want to know how much money I spent on my computer and uh, on DCS itself, just upgrading it to keep playing it because I fucking love it. <clears throat> um, next point, which I knew when I started was, you need at least an hour to play, right, to actually achieve anything, um, especially if you're playing a full fidelity aircraft because by the time you load the server up or load the mission up, you've got to start the plane up, you've got to take off, you've got to fly to the objective area, you've got to do your objective, you've got to fly back, you've got to land. That all takes time, right? And if you've only got like, you know, 10 minutes, you can only play 10 minutes at a time because you got to look after a kid or, you know, you're that flat out with work or whatever. Uh, DCS probably not the game for you because yeah, you're not going to get anything done in 10 minutes at all, all right? Yeah, probably stick with War Thunder or Ace Combat. We can just jump in, have a quick bladder round and leave. Yeah, that's more probably more suited to you. So you're going to need uh, you know, at least an hour dedicated to, to sit down and actually fly a sortie and enjoy it properly. So just keep that in mind as well. And the last one is the community is amazing. So reach out for help. Don't, don't think that uh, no one's going to help you because we all started in your shoes at some point. Even the people that fly planes, you know, commercial or uh, civilian aircraft, um, when they switch over to DCS, they know some things, but they don't know all of it, all right? And that's the exact same. Everyone's in the same boat. We're not uh, as good as we are, you know, two, three years down the track is when we first started. Like I said, when I first started, I didn't even know what the hell an SU-25 was. I thought it was a, I thought it was a fighter jet. I had no idea what the hell it was, uh, but it's an attack aircraft, all right? So don't be, don't be ashamed. Just be honest and say, hey, look, uh, you know, um, I want to get into this game and I need help. Where can I go to get help? Can anyone point me in the right direction? And there'll be so many people that'll reach out to you and uh, give you a hand and offer you advice and go flying with you. Like, legit. Like, there's, it's a really good community. Yeah, there's a couple of trolls here and there, and here and there, but for the most part, everyone's super helpful. So, yeah, don't be afraid to uh, to reach out and ask for help, you know, comment sections in YouTube videos, discords, message people, talk to people on comms. Like, yeah, everyone is super helpful. If you fuck something up, just say, sorry, it's my first day and be like, no, honestly, it's my first day. I don't know what I'm doing. And then, you know, it's going to lessen the blow for someone being pissed off at you. Right? It's like when you're uh, driving your car and then a learner pulls out and does something stupid in front of you and see the old plates and you're like, okay, well, they don't really know what they're doing yet. They're still learning. So you're not as angry at them. Okay. So just be honest and say that, you know, you don't really know what the hell you're doing. Can someone help you? 
and hopefully they will. All right. Anyways, guys, I know it's been a long one, but um, I feel it needed to be covered, especially for people that are brand new and uh, sitting on the fence on whether to get into DCS world. Um, that's covered pretty much everything that uh, you need to know to get started. And uh, yeah, that'll do us. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, uh, if you do me a solid favor and hit the like button, number one, if you enjoyed it, some stuff uh, made sense to you, it helped you, uh, like it, share it with your friends. Uh, and secondly, if you haven't already, if you uh, so hit the big subscribe button as well, do me a solid and subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 4,000, almost at 4,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Did not think I'd get to this number. So yeah, appreciate everyone that has hit the subscribe button already. And if you did just hit the subscribe button, thank you, you legend. I really, really do appreciate all the support and uh, feedback and uh, banter and all the rest of it that goes with, you know, you guys interacting with myself and each other in the channel. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. And yeah, hopefully I see you guys flying in a server or flying on YouTube or somewhere in the near future. All right, guys, that Lewis. Catch us later.